Hello, welcome or welcome back to Made by Amanda Mal. I'm Amanda and I make stuff. For those of you who don't know me, I am a crochet artist. I mostly make amigurumi plushie type items that I sell at market events and online. And if you are caught up on these videos, first of all, thank you for watching. And second of all, you would know that this is my third market breakdown video in a row. And that is because I had three market events the last three weekends. This is my third weekend of events and the first event out of these three events in a row actually went way better than expected and I just wasn't anticipating that and I had sold out of pretty much all of my inventory so these last couple weeks in between all of the events I've been basically remaking all of my inventory every week and it's been pretty stressful but I love crocheting so it's always still fun and I just love doing events so that's fun also. Finally after this event this weekend I will have a little bit of a break until some other events next month. This video is going to be a market breakdown of everything I made for this event, how much I sell all of those items for, and then I will come back after the event to let you guys know how it went. This event is actually a big softball opening day kind of like softball tournaments for all ages at this big park. I actually had another winter event at this specific park that I did really well at this past year. Hopefully there will be a lot of people there, a lot of kids, a lot of families. The weather is finally starting to get a little bit nicer out. There is a chance of rain but it's definitely a low chance so I'm gonna cross my fingers that all the rain holds off and that we just have a nice day finally because also if you've watched my last couple market breakdown videos you would have seen that I've been battling wind and chaos for the last two weeks when it comes to the weather so I'm just hoping for a nice day for once and I'm really excited. I made as much inventory as I could. This was a busy week. I actually had some decent Etsy sales this week so I was busy doing a lot of that stuff and I didn't get to make a lot of new items which I would have really liked to make but it is what it is. I'm going to show you guys what I did end up making. Any patterns that you see in this video will be linked below in the description and I'm going to go through all of my items starting from my least expensive to my most expensive items and we are starting with my nuggets that are now keychain nuggets. They didn't always used to be but now they are keychain nuggets for now and these are eight dollars each and I have two keychain nuggets. Next I have Mallard Ducky keychains. These are also eight dollars and I have four Mallard duckies. Next are my yellow ducky keychains. I also have four of these and they are eight dollars each. Also a lot of people have been commenting on these videos asking where I get these keychains for my keychains. Um, I do buy them separately on uh, Amazon. I buy the claw clips and the chains separately and they will be linked in the description as well if you'd like to check that out. Next I have my white ducky keychains. These are also eight dollars each and I have four of these. Next I have my whale keychains. These are also eight dollars each and I have four of these. Next I have octo keychains. These are also eight dollars each and I have seven of these in different colors. Next I have pickle keychains. These are eight dollars each and I have four of these. I think I am not going to make more of these because they just haven't been selling great and I'm going to transition to making, I think I'm gonna make ice cream keychains for my next market so stay tuned for that. And lastly for my keychains I have strawberry keychains for eight dollars each and I have four of these. Moving on to my other items, I have my Octos. These are $10 each. I only have three of these. I'm gonna be moving on to a more dramatic Octo pattern once I sell out of these. So I haven't been making more lately, but yeah. Next, I have my Leggy Frogs. I only have two Leggy Frogs like this, but I did make something new this week. I made these new kind of frogs. This is super cute. This is an Etsy pattern I just got. I didn't follow it entirely correctly. For some reason I just didn't follow the leg directions. So I just did regular bobble stitches because I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't just follow the directions. It probably would have came out cuter if it did but it's still really cute. I've been looking for a new frog pattern because I just feel like 
the leggy frogs haven't been popping off lately and I just wanted to try something new. So I have one of these kind of frogs. I will also be selling this for $12 and I only have one of him and I'm interested to see if this will do better than my leggy frogs that I have. So I will let you guys know for sure. Next, I have my mushrooms. I only have four of these in different colors, but I'm bringing yarn with me to hopefully make more while I'm sitting at the event if I have time, because I would definitely like to have more with me. But for now I have four and I'm selling them for $12 each. Next, I have my possums. I have four of these for this market and I sell them for $12 each. Next, I have my Triceratops. I have these in a couple different colors. I have four of them in total and I will be selling them for $12 each. He kind of like matches the chair. That's cute. Next, the bird tears are coming back, you guys. If you've seen my setup or my market prep vlogs, you'll know that I have these like little tiered almost like a cake stand that I put a bunch of different kind of birds on and I didn't get a chance to do that at my last market because I didn't have time to make a bunch of different kind of birds but this week I really tried hard to make a bunch of birds. So I have one white duck. He is going to be $12. I also have one mallard duck. He will also be $12. And I also made penguins for this market. I have these two penguins and they will be $12 each. I also have chickens. These are $12 each and I have four of them. And lastly, for my bird tiers, I have my chubby eagles. I have three of these and these are $13 each. Next, I have my axolotls. I have six of these in some different colors and they are $13 each. Next, I have my bees. I have four of these and these are $13 each. Next, I have my turtles. I have six of these regular turtles and these are $20 each. And then I also have a strawberry turtle and she is $25. Next, I have my kitties. I have four kitties for this event. If you saw my market breakdown video from last week, I was explaining that I got a really bad skein of uh, Chenille Home Slim. I got a really bad black skein. It was like really chunky and waxy and hard to use. And I couldn't make a Calico Kitty because I was nervous that one side of his head was gonna look like a tumor or something because the yarn was like thick and giant. And I was stressing about that, but I did order new um, Sweet Snuggles Light and Chenille Home Slim colors on um, on um, Michael's online and it came in time it literally came last night so I made all these last night and thankfully it was a normal skein again and I was able to make my little calico kitty and she looks so cute I have four of these and they are $20 each next I have my cows I have three of these and I have this one regular one and then I have two of these heart spot ones they are so cute. I have three of these in total and these are $25 each. Next, I have one little bunny girl. She is $26. And last but not least, I obviously made another giraffe. I am obsessed with making these giraffes. They've been doing really well for me at my markets lately. This is an IQ crochet pattern and I have one giraffe and he is going to be $28. So that is everything I will be bringing to this event. Last time I was at this specific park, I sold out of almost everything that I had. So hopefully it goes that well. Hopefully I have enough stuff. Hopefully the weather is good. I will try to get some clips of my setup tomorrow and what the vibe is at the event. Wish me luck and I will be back after to let you guys know how everything went. Hey guys, I just got here. It's raining and it's cold and I'm pretty tired, but it's okay, you know why? I'm just a girl and I have a wagon. I'm just a girl and I'm gonna go set up. Hey guys, I'm all set up. The rain is just like a little drizzle sometimes, but it's not too bad. It's a little chilly, but it is supposed to get nicer out today, so hopefully I will still be here when 
the nice weather hits. Um, there's definitely a lot of like younger kids showing up and everyone's starting to come for their softball day. So hopefully it'll be a good day. I'm really excited and I'm gonna show you guys my setup and what things are looking like so far. Also, you guys can come hang with me while I do some last minute pricing things. And I'm going to let you know some tips for setting up by yourself if you're showing up to events on your own. Um, my number one tip being get a wagon. <laughs> I love my wagon. I just got it. I've had it for the last like couple events and it has been game changing when it comes to setting up and not having to make a million trips to my car. I also have a lot of heavy items and not having to like carry them back and forth and just being able to put them in the wagon is just so convenient especially like today i didn't a lot of times you don't get to pull up right to your spot at the event you have to do like a lot of walking today i had to park a little far away from my spot so if i had to carry everything individually like there would just be no way i'm gonna link my little wagon in the description because i love it um and also a tip for setting up your tent by yourself um i have a big 10 by 10 pop-up tent I'll have that linked as well. I like it because it's pretty, I mean, it's not easy to set up with one person. It would definitely ben be beneficial if you had multiple people setting it up, but um, it, is cap it is possible with one person. And my little hack that I use is when you're like trying to pull out the sides, put a sandbag on one of the corners or two of the corners and it makes it so much easier to pull out the legs of the tent by yourself so that's a really great tip um yeah and i like to just take my time i'm moving at a very slow pace today so i'm gonna finish my tagging and maybe i'll check in a little later these are all the little softball kiddos. Here they are. Did you guys see that parade of children? That giant parade of children? It was like something out of a movie. I don't even know. Like, I watched that parade, I filmed their little parade that was the end of of their parade they they finish the parade they like swerve around they come down the line of vendors and i swear to you i'm not even exaggerating it felt like all of them just came to my tent it was insane like within a minute i like turn from the parade to the front of my tent and they're like all just in my tent there was like a line out my tent and it was crazy it was some of the most exciting and stressful 20 30 minutes of my life i was like shaking and like freaking out i was like stressed i don't even know it was but it was exciting it was just it was it was a crazy time i don't know what else to say i was like shoving cash in my pockets i was trying to check people out as fast as possible it definitely got a little chaotic i'll get into that in a in a second but um yeah hopefully you can tell by the sound of that that it was another incredibly successful event for sure the day started off a little scary because it was like a little rainy it was kind of cold and i didn't know what the vibe was gonna be but it got nicer as the day went on, thank goodness. And everybody was there anyway because of the softball stuff. So I just got really lucky with a really awesome turnout. 
there were so many kids and younger people that were into my stuff it was awesome i am going to go through my sales with you guys and then we can chat after that about um the rest of my thoughts on this event my first sale was at 9 32 i think the event technically started at 9 but almost everybody was doing the parade stuff first at 9 and then everybody came to the tent but actually my first sale was to this girl that i went to high school with i actually saw her um two events back she was at that music festival festival event with her two kids she has the most adorable kids and that was the first time i saw them in person they were so cute and they bought some stuff from my table and then this first sale she was there again and she was there with her son and she said that her son had still was still playing with my turtle that he got a couple weeks before at my other market so that was so cute and he bought um my teal triceratops and that was twelve dollars my next sale, my second sale of the day was my chubby frog. Like I said, that was a new pattern for me and that was my second thing to sell. So I definitely think I'm going to have to make more of those as you'll see in the rest of my sales. I, I also sold my leggy frogs that I had. So maybe I'll still keep making a combo of the two, but that sale was just a chubby frog for $12 next was my giraffe and a blue axolotl the giraffe went really quick and a couple minutes after that a couple people actually came over to my tent asking about the giraffe and i had only one giraffe and it sold really early and that was a note to myself that i definitely need to be making more giraffes because people loved the giraffe the total for that sale was 41 dollars next was a yellow octo for ten dollars Next was another blue axolotl for $13. Next was a bee for $13. Next was an eagle for $13. Next was my gray bunny for $26. The girl that bought this was really cute. She was like, I got the last bunny last, but it was actually the only one I had. So <laughs> she got my special gray bunny. Next was a possum for $12. Next was a multi blue striped colored turtle and just the turtle with a plain blue shell for $40. Next was my strawberry shortcake turtle and a blue triceratops for $37. Next was my purple heart spot cow for $25. Next was a multi orange colored turtle and a purple axolotl for $33. Next was an octo keychain and a regular octo in the hot pink color for $18. Next was a pink axolotl for $13. Next was a red mushroom for $12. Next was a blue floral colored turtle for $20. Next was a red mushroom for $12. Next was a light pink octo for $10. Next was another blue floral turtle for $20. Next was my black cat for $20. Next was a turtle with a green shell for $20. Next was a pink axolotl for $13. Next was a leggy frog for $12. Next was a pink mushroom for $12. Next was a leggy frog and a hot pink heart spot cow for $37. Next was a pink penguin. However, the lady that went to pay for this penguin for her daughter did not end up Venmoing me for it. I don't know if it was by accident or I don't know it was pretty chaotic in the tent at that time um she pulled up my venmo she showed it to me and somehow it just i just never got the payment so that kind of sucks i didn't end up counting that towards my final revenue so but the pink penguin was was gone after that that one hurt me a little bit Next was a pink axolotl for $13. Next was my brown spot cow for $25. I think that was the last of my cows. Next was an octo keychain for $8. Next was an octo keychain, a ducky keychain, and a bee for $28. Next was my green triceratops for $12. Next was an octo keychain for $8. Next were two ducky keychains for $15. I still did the 
two for 15 deal. Next was a yellow mushroom and a whale keychain for $20. Next were two ducky keychains for $15. Next was an orange triceratops for $12. I think that was the last of my triceratops and I remember the lady that bought this one. She was like a like a middle older lady middle aged like older lady and she was like I think you might have to come home with me. <laughs> it was really funny. Next was a mallard duck for $12. Next was an eagle for $13. Next was a ducky keychain for $8. Next was a ducky keychain and a whale keychain for $15. Next was my one and only white duck for $12. Next was a white chicken and the tan tweed chicken for $24. Next was a bee for $13. Next was another bee for $13. Next was an eagle for $13. Next was my tan and white dog and my green penguin for $37. Next was the calico cat for $20. Next was a whale keychain and an octo keychain for $15. Next was the ivory tweed chicken. That was my last chicken for $12. Next was a possum and a red mushroom for $24. Wait, at this point, I was sold out of mushrooms. I had sold out before this order and I was making a red mushroom. It slowed down a little bit. So I was able to, I was crocheting the top of a red mushroom. And this girl who had already bought something for my table came back over and she was like, what are you making? And I was like, a mushroom. And she was like, a mushroom? Like how long will it take you to make? And I was like, I could probably make it in about 15 minutes. And she was like, if I come back, like, well, could I buy it? And I was like, okay, sure, I'll save it for you. So I really quickly was on the clock. I had to whip up this mushroom and then I sold it to her. So that was a $24 order, if I didn't say that already. Next was my gray cat for $20. Next was a white chicken for $12. Okay, that one was my actual last chicken. Next was a ducky keychain for $8. And then I made another red mushroom and I literally put it out on display and a girl immediately walked by and bought that. She bought a mushroom and an octo keychain for $20. And then my very last sale was my orange cat that I thought no one would ever love because it was that weird peachy color. And I didn't know if I liked it or not, but you know what? That girl did. And I hope she gives that kitty a great home. So all in all, my vendor fee for this event was $45. My square fees were $5.93, which includes the discounts for the keychains. And I obviously did not include the pink penguin payment. So with all of that deducted, my total profit for the day was $909.07 which I am incredibly happy with. I think that is insane. I'm going to show you a before picture of what my whole table looked like. I know you saw that video, but here is a picture just so you get the full scope of what my table looked like before. And then here is what my table looked like after you guys. I literally had like three things on the table. I had those three things and a couple keychains. Like it was crazy, but crazy in the good way. And I honestly had so much fun at this event. I think I already mentioned it in this video, but I had done an event at this same park in the winter that went really well. And I swear that some of the kids that were at that winter event were also at this event because these girls came over to my table and they were talking about how they had bought an octopus at a different event there at the park and I was like oh it's probably another you know crochet vendor but then these other girls came over and they were like oh we follow you on TikTok and I swear they looked really familiar and I feel like the odds of them just randomly following me on TikTok I don't have that many TikTok followers so I feel like they probably had gotten my card from the last event that I was there for and they followed me on TikTok from there. So that was so cool to see people that have got my stuff before. Some of my friends stopped by and my family was there and the weather got nice out so it was all in all just a really nice day. Let me give you guys some more stats on my sales. I had about $800 of sales in cash and only about like 200 in 
card payments. My best sellers in terms of number of items sold were again my keychains. I sold 17 in total which ended up being $136 of my sales and the thing that made me the most money in actual dollar amount was my turtles. I sold seven of those and that was $145 of my sales. This is just a little PSA to anybody watching this who does market events. Just make sure that you are keeping track of things. Even when things get chaotic, I know it gets hard, but I really make it a point. I've noticed that a lot of people have been paying with Venmo these days and I really make it a point to stay with that customer until I see the Venmo transaction actually come through on my phone. And I was noticing sometimes people would like step out of the way and they'd like try to let me help other people, but I have it pulled up on my phone. I'm doing like, I'm tracking it through Square. So I'm waiting to see that Venmo transaction pop up on my phone and I don't I try not to let them walk away from the table until it actually goes through it got really stressful doing that because of how chaotic the tent was and obviously I let something fall through but it was a learning experience because now I'm gonna be more on top of it you know it's not always somebody that's trying to screw you over sometimes it just it just happens you know they don't finalize the the Venmo transaction and what if that was a really expensive item? I'd be missing out on a ton of money. So I actually had that happen before at an event a couple weeks ago where I was selling my bigger items and someone asked me if I had cash app and I knew that I had it, but I hadn't used it in a while. And they just sent me a payment through cash app and they walked away from the table and I panicked for a good 10 minutes because I couldn't figure out. I had to like relink my bank account or something that was on my part you know because i didn't figure it out on my end so just make sure that if you're doing those kind of virtual transactions that you are making sure that it's going through before you let somebody walk away from your table i'm sure they wouldn't mind if you said i'm just waiting for it to go through can you hold on one second you know you're running a business and that is not rude i do have some bigger events coming up and I'm trying to find a better method of maybe how to check people out. Usually I'm the only person checking people out, but I'm thinking maybe I'll have someone help me and do sh show them how to use Square on their phone as well and try to do the have both of us do transactions so we'll be able to check people out faster. But I do just like kind of knowing what's going on. And then if I make a mistake, that's on me. I don't want to have to like blame anybody else, you know? I've also been thinking about maybe getting an iPad because I do everything from my phone and it's kind of hard to see all the items in Square on my phone. And it takes me a little bit of time to actually do the transactions on there because I'm like sorting through all the items. So... Do any of you guys use iPads for checkout purposes? And would it be worth it for me to get one, do you think? I also think for my bigger events coming up in the near future, I'm going to try to make some bigger items. I just bought some jumbo yarn and I'm gonna try to make some bigger, more high priced items. I right now don't really have too many items over like $30. So I'm thinking maybe it would help my sales if I had bigger items, but also if I'm using jumbo yarn, that's also a lot more in material costs. So I'll have to see, I would like to just try that out. Thankfully, I have a couple weeks off until my next event. Here is what happened for my next event. I was actually scheduled for another animal rescue event at another winery. If you saw my last market breakdown video, I just did a similar thing at another winery. This event was like that plus a car show and it looked like it was supposed to be a pretty big event. And then two weeks after that, I have my biggest event yet, which is a big Mayfair in my local town. I paid a lot of money for a vendor spot, so I think that's gonna be a huge event. And I had a two week gap in between that winery event and that big event. I have absolutely no inventory right now, as you could see from my table picture. So that winery event was supposed to be in like three weeks on the 11th. 
literally a day or two ago, they texted me to tell me that they were postponing the winery event because it's also Mother's Day weekend and they couldn't find enough people to staff the winery for the event. And I was thinking, oh, maybe it is a blessing in disguise to have the whole month to do inventory prep because also right after that Mayfair, literally the weekend after, I start a farmer's market that I will be at every weekend for the month of June. So, so technically I'll have like six events in a row. But then I started thinking a little harder and I was like, actually, maybe it's a blessing in disguise because that park that I just did this crazy softball event at is having this big Saturday event on the 11th. And I had originally really wanted to do that one because that's a huge event for that town. And I knew it was gonna be really successful because I always do well at this park and I had already booked the winery, so I was like, oh, I can't do it. But now the winery is canceled. You know what, guys? As stressed as I am all the time, I love stress. I love stress, and I'm not gonna lie, I also love money. And it's hard for me to say no to an event that I am pretty sure will be very successful. And I still have two weeks of prep in between that and the big Mayfair, so... I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm sure I'll be on here complaining about how stressful the prep in between is, but I feel like I'm really making a name for myself at this park. And I feel like I might run into kiddos again that know who I am. And I just feel like I know a ton of kids are gonna be at this park event. And I know that that's probably gonna be successful. So whatever, I'm just, I'm feeling like I don't know if that was the best decision, but it is what it is because I already sent a check-in for my spot. So I guess I'm doing it. Thankfully, I have a couple of weeks until then. So I'm going to finally have some time for some market prep videos in between. And I'll show you guys some new patterns that I'm working on. And I'm definitely going to really finally add another table to my setup so we'll see how that all goes and i think i'm going to order some new display stuff again so stay tuned for that make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss all of it and also let me know if there's anything you guys would like to see in between now that i finally have some time i'm saying i have some time but i'm really going to be on the grind getting as much inventory done as possible but let me know if there's any videos specifically that you would like to see and thank you for watching this video if you did, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!